here we are on Ohana. As everyone knows, Ohana means never having to say you're sorry. Up here on the top left-hand corner, our random player has spawned as a Zerg. He is from Team NVIDIA. It is Kiralan. Yay, that guy. And down here on the bottom right-hand side of the map, we have doing the awesome extractor trick as if he was Nest T himself. It is from Carbot Fanimations. Uh, we've got Mad X Dog. <laughs> And obviously we've just got the overlords pathing towards each other. No early pools, no early craziness uh, so far in this game, other than that really slick, awesome, sexy uh, assimilator trick. It looks like he's gonna take it for real this time, extractor trick, because there's filthy zergs. And uh, we've got the pool down first for Kirillin here, who goes for the gas right afterwards. Okay. Maybe. He's actually got the drone waiting there. He's very eager to get the gas actually going and starting to mine. And he's sending out a drone scout on top of this. Oh, the nice little heart. I don't know if y'all can see that. Select the drone saver. And you'll see the nice heart. The very huck like device. Spawning pool coming down for Mad X Dog now. Neither of them have expanded yet, but the pool for uh, Kirillin obviously a fair bit ahead of his opponent. That has been scouted out by Mad X Dog. Uh, another little extractor trick there, but uh, from the other player, Kirillin, as he just kind of supply blocked himself a little bit, I think more by accident than by design there, uh, to do the little trick. But the hatchery coming down for Mad X Dog. And I'm wondering if Carolyn's really even going to bother because he did go for the uh, second overlord before putting a hatchery down. Uh, so he's just starting to speed up. So it is a fair bit late if he does intend to expand from here, but he does, is sending two drones out, uh, changing his mind and just doing the one. So a bit of a later hatchery for him. Both pools are done, but... Uh, it doesn't look like Speed has actually started for Mad X Dog yet, even though he went ahead and got the gas uh, prior to the pool and has the 100 mined, but uh, hasn't actually begun it yet. Got the first four lings on the way for Kirlin. Speed is going to finish a little bit after they actually get there, and uh, six lings are already right out for Mad X Dog as well. So this shouldn't be too much trouble. Even when Speed does uh, finish here, he might get a better scout and stuff off with it, but I don't think he's going to do any any damage or anything um, with it. A Baneling Nest is coming down for Kirillin as well, though. Uh, speed is seconds away from being finished, and there it does kick in as he gets away from those opposing links and actually uh, swings back on in, and he may be trying to go after a drone or two, but there are more links actually in the back uh and he will try and get that one will he get a second i think just the one drone there uh was killed and there's a fair number of lings actually out here by mad x dog so he may suspect that there's uh, a bit more aggression particularly since the hatchery hadn't really gone down uh until a fair bit later on uh, a couple banelings are being brought in defensively here at home which uh, kind of makes sense given the number of lings that his opponent has come up with and speed is about to finish for him as well uh, as he cruises on in the banelings getting a couple really good connections to begin with here uh, he'll have a few of these lings left but uh, not nearly as many as he could have obviously uh, had the banelings not hit as strong but uh, reinforcements coming on in he may be able to just play and take out this hatchery uh, with two queens up on the high ground uh, not as much chance he'll get a lot done there. Uh, drones coming down, almost more of a distraction than anything. Waiting, trying to make these uh, Banelings pop. The Queens may both fall here. Uh, Banelings almost done. They are done. They do clean this up, but for the cost of two uh, Queens and one Ling still actually left alive. Reinforcements still coming for Mad Dog X uh, across the map. 
a spine crawler being built in the main base as he uh, does come in that spine is down and will kind of defend that position but it seems like the hatchery is going to be safe on the low ground uh, reinforcements are still coming in from Mad X Dog, but I think uh, Kirillin's hit a point where he has kind of stabilized, although he's sending his own lings actually just right across the map and not actually defending at home. So he may just lose this voluntarily almost. He, he could have defended just plain stop this, but uh, it looks like he is going back the other way. Uh, he has taken out a queen on that side, but I'm not sure that he's going to get enough damage done here as he's chased away to actually make up for uh, the difference in losing that hatchery. There's this kind of random queen out uh, by the watchtower here. Uh, but yeah, an interesting decision by Kirillin to do that, to actually really just voluntarily let that hatchery go down when he didn't uh, didn't have to. I think this group could have uh, could have done it. Does Mad Dog? I, I'm not sure what that <laughs> that means. Does he think he's losing, or I I don't know? Or is he trying to taunt his opponent? I'm not sure what that particular one means. Um, Spine Crawler putting in some work here. He will eventually get a surround as these lings are cleaned up, and the first spine will go down. A second one is there in the mineral line, however, and this queen is going to be enough to uh, clean things up. More lings are just streaming on in. The overall count, yeah. Carolyn does uh, just kind of leave. And uh, no GG from him there, I guess. Alrighty, we are back here on map number two. We are on Akalon Waste. This time around, of course, our random player, Kirlin, has spawned as a Terran. He is in the bottom right-hand corner. We have NVIDIA's After Hours Gaming League uh, team player. It is Kirlin. And the person who I think had now realized maybe he prematurely left that last game is going to be our Zerg player from Team Carbot Fanimations. He is Mad X Dog. So he's already aware um, of what his opponent's race is, not due to his own scouting, but actually due to his opponent's uh, scouting coming in. I, I always found when I played random, I would often scout a little later just because I didn't want to reveal myself to them. I wanted them to have to spend the money or spend the time to come find out what I was. I, I already knew what they were. So I could get away with the scout a little bit later on. Carolyn did go out for that uh, quick scout. He may have thought, um, you know, expected something like a really early pool or something, particularly if he thought that uh, his opponent might be frustrated or a little upset with himself at uh, leaving the last game. But uh, did go out and take a look around anyway to get a sense of what is going on and is potentially using that information to uh, make the command center here that he is, although kind of what he saw, he didn't see the hatchery going down or anything, so uh, so maybe he just had this in mind to do uh, anyway. The refinery coming on now, so obviously we're not uh, getting a reaper opening or anything like that, as a second marine is coming out, so it's going to be a bit of an economic one here for uh, Kirillin. Um, one thing that can happen often with uh, random players as well is you can learn to take some economic advantages again just because the other player can't necessarily start their build 100 percent optimally against you so you can cut uh, a corner or two at the beginning of a game since you know what their race is they don't know yours so you can do something that may take a uh, second or two longer than it uh, than it actually should a uh, little bit of a supply block here though for Kirlin until this uh, orbital command does finish. And he's actually going right up to two gases uh, right off the bat. Baneling Nest coming down for a Mad X dog here. He may be thinking of an early Baneling bust, uh, particularly after getting that Overlord in. He may have uh, taken a peek at the top of that ramp and saw something that he figures may be vulnerable in a little bit. Since the command center itself uh, is being constructed, he figures that it, that's going to float down away. So 
it may be a little uh, skimpier in terms of what's guarding the top of the ramp, or at the very least, he could potentially get some damage done on the low ground uh, in the natural if uh, he's able to get some lings and banelings up into there. So we'll see how that does develop. He's already got uh, eight lings out on the map, which is a little more than you would usually do uh, typically. So he could be looking at a little bit of an early aggression or poke there, whether it's actually all in or not, uh, who knows. His opponent, Kirilin, is going uh, right up to a starport as soon as that factory is finished. And he's actually got the factory up in the air waiting for that reactor to finish. There come the early lings here, trying to prevent the bunker from going down and does force the cancel and makes this uh, orbital actually lift off. It is a pretty good number for this sort of thing. Just uh, two or three Marines are not going to be able to hold this force out, but it's not such an overcommitment that uh, you've got like 20, 25 lings or anything. He will be bringing these into uh, Bane links. And again, since the um, construction of that bunker was denied on the low ground, he may have some sense that there's not going to be one actually up on the high ground. So this Bane link bust may end up being uh, completely the right call here. Uh, Widowmine burrowing possibly just in time. We'll have to see how this hit goes off in preventing the uh, Bane Links from coming up against this Supply Depot, but they do get the detonation off before the Widow Mine even goes, but then here comes the group. Not a great hit off that Widow Mine. Uh, going directly after the Orbital, I think that's, yeah, wasn't exactly intended there. Uh, we'll go after, clean up the rest of these Marines, and he's got a lot of Lings in here with a few reinforcing in place. The SCVs, I think kind of repairing themselves a little bit. Uh, all he's really got to worry about is that Widow Mine in the back. There's not a lot here for the Terran player that is going to kill much of anything. Uh, the individual Marines, as they pop out, are going to get cleaned up. But again, a Widow Mine does come through. He's got to get out of range of that. One little blast goes off, but it does take a Marine along with it. And a couple still alive here. Uh, this will get cleaned up, but a fair bit of damage has been done as 12 workers have been killed. Uh, Ling's getting a few more marine kills, but will ultimately go. Does get that uh, reactor, though, and this hole is still in the wall. He will finish this barracks off before the next marine comes out. He tried to repair it there, but that will fall. Uh, nice widow mine hit that time around. Nice choke position on that. A uh, couple lings left, and he's having a hard time stabilizing here at the moment. Uh, the medevac almost able to completely outheal the lings uh, as they do get picked off by the SCVs themselves. This uh, door is still open. Uh, oh, really? I don't know if that was intentional or not, but I hope it was as he used the uh, widow mine to actually kill the worker that was uh, working on the barracks. Uh, given its splash damage. So uh, pretty good there in delaying everything. A lot of workers have been uh, killed here, 13, and he prevented a lot of that mule mining time, uh, caused them to be pulled off a fair bit. And it looks like our uh, Zerg player is now going to um, halt the aggression for a bit, go up to three Evo chambers. He's getting a Roach Warrant as well with this and uh, potentially going back to uh, droning as he does get a big round or two of those out uh, getting plus one uh, attack and plus one range attack um, started at the same time there. So he's not just gonna stick on this uh, really early uh, Ling tech. And I, I have to agree with him there. Once there's like these three or four Widow Mines, uh, how many are there? Maybe there are only, yeah, there are four uh, out there. You know you're just gonna take these stray hits uh, here and there, and so you're just kind of throwing half your forces away to continue to charge in. He did a lot of damage on top of it, um, so don't uh, don't overdo it. The Widow Mine does get uh, good detonations off the, <laughs> this one Widow Mine. A uh, nice little hero commander is at 20 kills. Most of those are, of course, Lings. A spore crawler is going down uh, to detect for those widow mines, and with a, a high hatchery done, layer done. I mean, now uh, he will be able to. Uh, these, I think, will die. Yeah, before they actually get back down. Uh, the spore was there to 
give detection as he was, I think, still within range of that. So, uh, yeah, with the lair done, he's going to have the ability to have that mobile detection. He can wor move workers back down now um, if he does want to. Looks like he's making a round of 10 roaches. And there's still very little defense here at the base of Carolyn. He's got, I think he's literally, <laughs> for a second there, literally had more medevacs than Marines. Everyone had their personal medevac. There's actually eight of them already out onto the map for less than 16 Marines. So uh, kind of neat to see that as, of course, he continued that production uh, throughout the entire time. He's got to find some way to claw his way uh, back into this a little bit potentially uh, drop play. There's a spore in the mineral line itself, but uh, no spine crawlers or anything down, so potentially he could uh, drop on the fringes of the base. Looks like he will be picking up for a drop here um, and going towards the top side. This overlord is going to miss him as he swings up top. Um, if he could get a little bit of damage down there, or even, honestly, at this point, even if he can't get a lot of damage done, but can prevent this army from feeling free to move across the map uh, and just buy himself time. That's going to be uh, really crucial here. The SCV count is actually in the Terran's favor uh, as he has had the two orbital commands going. And, of course, making all those lings and bane lings uh, did prevent drones from being made uh, for a good portion of that time. He will be dropping here at the uh, third base that his opponent is attempting to uh, put down. And three drones will be cleaned up here. There is currently... Uh, no path uh, to that base as the rocks are still up to uh, ambitious lings are going to come through and actually scare this main force away. He will drop up to where these overlords are and that could be a fairly uh, reasonable pickup as well, uh, just picking up the 400 minerals involved in that and then forcing his opponent to come all the way back around could just drop back to the low ground again and that's exactly what he's doing as uh, Mad Dog has not split his forces between the two bases. So he will just go after this hatchery yet again. Uh, Mad Dog is swinging back around, but it's a really long way to go back and forth here. And I think he could outrate deny this. The roach is now in place. He does cancel it actually uh, just in time and uh, picks up. I, I kind of wonder if he could have kept that. He had a few seconds at least of life left. The roaches may have been able to divert uh, enough attention to... Uh, to basically stop that from being cancelled, but it would have been pretty low health, I, I gotta admit that. He actually lets that force get uh, completely cleaned up there, just tanking a bailing cut, when he could have probably picked that up, but the uh, hatchery on the low ground has not started up again, uh, whereas our Terran player is actually expanding towards his third base. Uh, it looks like he is grabbing structure armor? Is that is that a thing now? He's got well, he's got plus one attack. Well, I guess maybe he's got plus one attack. He's working on the plus one armor, but I don't think he had an army already to continue. So I guess in the meantime, he went for structure armor. You don't usually see it, um, but it could make some sense, particularly if your opponent does have a lot of lings. It could actually do a fair bit uh, against them. And uh, you know that you've got kind of the time wasted on your engineering bay while you're waiting for this armory anyway. So not necessarily a, a bad call to do, just not one that we see all that often. Um, Medivac is now swinging in from the south side, although he changed his mind for just a second there. Pretty decent little all-marine force uh, available for Kirillin here. He does have one tank coming out to join. There's no uh, marauders with this. Medevac is going to be dropping on the wrong, the slightly the wrong area. Uh, I don't think he, yeah, he didn't mean to put them down on the low ground there. I think he'll pick up the other three, potentially Medevac, uh, boost them in. Uh, is going after workers here and now going after this extractor itself. I uh, can take that out and delay gas. Back at home though, uh, roaches, hydras, lings overrunning a whole lot here. Uh, these Marines, just not the best against this much firepower. Uh, Vikings coming out will almost... Well, I was going to say they were going to get killed, but the Hydras just ignored them for the time being. This whole army is kind of going down here. The Zerg is just overwhelming this position. Uh, 
the drop is actually still going back in Mad Dog's side of the map, but I don't think it matters at this point. There's just too much Zerg here. All the medevacs are going down as well. The production facilities are going to be falling here. Uh, he's just camped completely on top of them. Uh, even these few lanes inside preventing Marines from massing back up is going to make a big difference. Uh, the wall is kind of completely open here as well. His opponent is trying to get barracks back up and running, but uh, I, I just don't really see how. A, a tank came out, got into a good position, but there are lings already right on it uh, to prevent him from from doing a lot of damage. He really needed to have a tank or two get a good amount of fire, and it just uh, wasn't happening here. So Mad Dog X is really overrunning the position. I'm not sure how Kirillin can hope to... Uh, hope to hold this off there's really no place that he can rally anything is is the problem at this point uh, on top of the fact that there's just way too many roaches to deal with oh my <laughs> one one single hydra basically caused that widow mine to damage like half the scvs that are remaining um so they're not going to be tanking for everything or anything at all Kirillin, I understand from his point of view, he's got like three still kind of running bases, but there's no way for him to muster any sort of army. And Kirillin does tap out here um, as he just couldn't push this back. Alrighty, we have jumped into game number three and Mad Dog X wasting no time whatsoever. He doesn't even know what race his opponent is, but he is gone for an early pool, which is almost finishing. So Mad Dog X, Team Carbot Fanimations up here on the type right top right hand corner but action is already going to be underway shortly. So down on the bottom left we do have NVIDIA's Carolyn who unfortunately hasn't started a pool yet just now. We'll be getting that up, so uh, still a far ways off. And I think he's going to go uh, throw down. Now, this one is a scout, so uh, hopefully that will help him out. Will this overlord catch sight of Ling's coming out? I actually don't know if it will. Yes, yeah, they do wander under his vision path, so uh, he will know that that is coming. The uh, drone actually definitely knows he does turn right back around and come home to uh, help his compatriots um, defend themselves. There are a good number. Uh, that's interesting to make the double hatchery there. I don't know if I've seen that too often, but it might not be too bad of an idea uh, to do this. That's going to buy a little bit of time as he goes right after the hatchery. Um, Ling's now going after one of these drones, a spine crawler immediately going down and six Ling's are being made uh, out of the hatchery here, uh, pulling the drone at mineral tricks, trying to keep a few of them alive. A uh, couple drones really, really low health here, but not actually uh, going down all that much. Eight have been killed though, uh, as Ling's do come out and clean this all up. The hatchery is canceled. Uh, up in the main base of Kirillin. More Lings will be coming in, just two of them though, and there are uh, five on the defense here for Kirillin. And a defensive spine now coming down for Mad X, who is not going to be rallying the remainder of his Lings forward. It's actually kind of neat how this will play out. So, um, Mad Dog X not only did not get back up the ramp with the additional two lings, but he doesn't have an overlord. Actually, he never bothered to send it across the map. So he may be under the impression that the hatchery in the main base was never canceled. And that could make a fair bit of difference. So while it was canceled, he may be expecting a whole lot of uh, counter aggression coming out of uh, Kirillin when that is not, in fact, uh, going to be the case. He's just got the original batch of lings that he made and he's really more going to take a look around. This wasn't uh, a sustained attack or anything like that. So the situation is probably a lot different than what uh, Mad Dog X currently thinks it is. Um, and that may inform a lot of his decisions in terms of whether or not he's going to attempt to expand from this point or uh, or what's going to happen. It looks like he is sending a drone down to the low ground 
and will be expanding here. His uh, opponent is not opting to do so. Just started uh, mining some gas, and he's actually uh, really loading up on lings here. Uh, definitely has enough to uh, hold off this force by Maddox Dog, who's going to get up and uh, potentially see that there is no hatchery in the place that one had been building. He's definitely outnumbered here. Neither of them uh, has speed or really speed anywhere on the way. Uh, Mad X Dog is actually banking gas. He's not using it uh, for the speed upgrade yet. I'm not sure what that was. He's holding position and he will kind of get overwhelmed there. Now Kirlin does have a pretty damn big uh, ling advantage. I don't think Mad Dog should have stayed to fight at all. I think he needed to save uh, all of those links and just get them out of there. Um, if he was like, you know, 10 to 15, something like that, then he'd be fine. 6 to 15, that's getting more in a dangerous area where this hatchery may not live. You're going to be able to overpower uh, the, both the links and a queen at that point. And even this spine crawler may not be uh, enough to help on the high ground, but he will be going after the hatchery on the low. And I don't know if there's a way that he's going to be able to save this 12 more lings are on their way out but it's going to be a little while before they are ready uh it's still about 10 seconds and this thing is not long for this world and this hatchery is going uh if he focuses it yeah will fall there and i think now we're gonna have kirillin pull back but he just started his own hatchery anyway, so even though that does, uh, well, it's not a cancel, it's a full-on kill since that was finished, so you do lose uh, all the resources there. But uh, his own is certainly not uh, already finished or anything. Going for two more spine crawlers, both of them trying to play uh, fairly defensive um, with things here. The speed done for Kirillin. And speed now done for Mad Dog as well. Uh, his links have a little bit more health and maybe a few more numbers here uh, coming in. He does drive his opponent up onto the high ground, but into these uh, spine crawlers, he will want to retreat from that. But Mad Dog may now be in a position to cancel this hatchery himself, as long as he doesn't uh, just let his guys run into spines on the high ground. Uh, he's pretty much unfettered here on the low now, but uh, yeah, of course, uh, Kirillin does have the option to outright cancel as opposed to uh, just plain losing uh, his hatch as his opponent did. Um, Kirillin also has 23 workers compared to only 12 that uh, Mad Dog has at the moment. So the kind of long-term durability is still going to go in Kirillin's favor, who, uh, although he's got all those spines kind of clumped in that one position, he baits his opponent back into them, which uh, gives him the numerical advantage. If he had could have gotten into uh, the mineral line and done a lot of damage outside the range of those, then uh, that would have been a different story. Mad Dog, I think, views himself now as committed to this attack. And I, I get the feeling he's going to leave again. Um, this time, though, I think he's a lot more in the right to do so, uh, as he is more than half, uh, like less than half the worker count of his opponent uh, at the time. But he may just kind of decide since the first game went how it went that he's not going to leave and will at least try and struggle his way out of this one. His opponent definitely doesn't have the kind of ability to just launch a full-on attack yet. But he is going up to a lair. He's getting a Roach Warren, or at least he was for a second there. Uh, looks like he didn't. He's got three hatches. Well, two in the main and then one coming down again in the natural, so a third one on its way. Uh, he'll be able to uh, to get some units out once those are all done. But uh, yeah, like I said here, he started, looked like he was gonna start a roach wine. He did pull that drone off though, and it actually went to mine gas instead. Another little skirmish here in the middle as uh, Kirillin's lings do take the uh, advantage there and will be now going after the uh, the hatchery yet again. A few lings coming out to defend. Advantage still on Carolyn's side by uh, a decent number as a second wave of reinforcements does come in. And uh, there you go. 
Yeah. Calls GG, this time I think definitely rightly, and Carolyn does end up uh, taking the series here with a game number three victory. So he will be going on.